Okay, uh, magandang uh, gabi. Uh, good evening po sa inyong lahat. <clears throat> uh, if you're on Zoom, uh, good evening. Uh, I can see that uh, we have um, quite a number there. Uh, we would like to welcome... Uh, sino ba mga nandito? Uh, si Agnes. Ay, Agnes. Si Arnel. And of course, si Franz. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you will be... Uh, you'll learn a lot. And uh, if you have questions, um, you can post it or chat it uh, on the comment section. And for those that are watching us on um, on StreamYard or on Facebook, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, before I go ahead, um, let me ask my wife uh, to greet you as well. Kasama ko siya magpipresent ngayon. Bagong gising. Oh, Parehas hi. kami. <laughs> okay. Magandang uh, gabi po dyan sa Philippines. And of course, dito po sa US, uh, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Okay. So hopefully po ay uh, makakatulog kayo ng mahimbing tonight. <laughs> I hope. Yes. Mm-hmm. It will of, help you. Yeah. And of course, uh, if you are watching us on YouTube or after the live event, uh, feel free to... Um, Post at the comment section if you have questions or so we can get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, uh, let me go to the first slide. Okay, understanding sleep and natural solutions. Uh, there are many things that uh, we uh, really need to understand about sleep. And uh, most of us are struggling with it. Uh, some of us are struggling how to wake up because we always feel sleepy. Uh, there are also people that are struggling with um, how to uh, get to a, a good natural sleep, mm-hmm. right? And that's very important. And uh, tonight uh, or this morning in the U.S., we will be talking about that in a more scientific way. Uh, we cannot be giving you a lot of information uh, because that will be an overload. And we don't also want you to uh, suffer from a lot of uh, uh, info indigestions. <laughs> yeah. So, because it's a reality with this pandemic, uh, there are a lot of people who have uh, who have the anxiety that causes them not to have a good sleep. Mm-hmm. Or they would say they make some, they have a lot of activities like uh, binge watching, whether adult, teenagers, or even kids would do yeah. watching TV for endless time, especially if you are watching teleserie or telenovela, <laughs> telenovela mm-hmm. that you have to finish up all the series. Uh, one time, I know, trinay nito, mag binge watch one time. Yeah, but, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I did also. So when I said, oh, it's so, it's, uh, it's it's not really healthy. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, although I enjoyed it uh, for the first, I think, uh, yung dalawang uh, ano ba yan, series. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, yung isang series pero parang dalawang episode. Mm-hmm. But after that, I just get tired of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So anyway, not only that, ano, especially for young kids or yung mga teenagers who plays computer games endlessly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doesn't want to sleep at all because of the of just playing games. So okay, uh, because of your work, too much work. Na kasi di ba work from home. So it it's also difficult when you do work from home because the work never ends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just there all the time, and it's it's a matter of you really stopping like to do the work from your computer. Take time to spend time with family or have your own rest so so many other issues that are arising that's why people have a lot of issues in terms of sleep deprivation Mm -hmm. okay so um what do you call uh young sleep deprivation medyo tongue twister Mm -hmm. uh we often um worry about everything uh, and, and we should be doing during the maintained good health, right? Um, and um, we are concerned about getting regular exercise, having a healthy diet, managing our emotional health and dozens of other factors that influence how we feel. However, we often neglect a major part of good health, that's getting a good sleep. Mm-hmm. For most of us, busy work, schedules, demands from our family, an endless to-do list 
keep us from getting the rest we need. I remember every time uh, we go home, we always talk to ourselves like, uh, how was your day? And uh, one of the more more common saying or expression that we share is, uh, hindi na natatapos ang trabaho. Yeah, that's right? true. So it's kind of uh-huh. like an endless thing to do. And um, while the amount of necessary sleep will vary from person to person, sometimes people can sleep just for like five hours. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay na sila. But after that, yung iba naman pala, uh, they, only, they really need eight hours of sleep. So yeah. it really uh, vary from person to person. Yeah. Many of us have the best intentions of getting adequate sleep, but mm-hmm. it can be hard to get the mind and body to relax after a full day of stress or activity. Uh, you may even think that the only consequences of losing sleep are feeling tired or cranky the next day. Ito yung karaniwang nagiging issue sa atin, eh, di ba? Once we are not able to sleep well, we are, like, our emotions is like, uh, it makes it us irritable. irritable yeah. Mm-hmm. So, definitely, it has a significant impact on our mental and physical health. Mm-hmm. And without proper sleep, uh, we put ourselves at risk mm-hmm. uh, for serious health issues that will impact our quality of life. Uh, sleep dep- deprivation can actually make it difficult for us to lose weight. Mm-hmm. That's and true. there's a lot of hormonal issues that's happening in the background. Uh-huh. So you uh, accumulate fats so you uh, and your body metabolism is impaired. Mm-hmm. So that's um, really something. Yeah. And can also negatively influence our emotions. Uh, you become uh, yeah. you know, emo- emotionally uh, uh, unstable. That's true. Uh-huh. It can also in- impact how we learn or influence our motivation level. At times when we are not able to sleep, it's so hard for us to really be energetic the following day. So it's, it, 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 it is very difficult for a person to have the motivation. Mm-hmm. And even the reaction time. Mm-hmm. And ability to drive safely. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in the U.S. and even across the globe, uh, in the Philippines uh, as well, mm-hmm. there are many uh, accidents uh, caused by um, sleepy divers. That's right. And uh, not only accidents, uh, it can even cost uh, lives. Yeah. You know? Also, it has a negative impact on different organs, body organs of our body, overall mm-hmm. health. It doesn't just you don't say that oh because i was not able to sleep well that's why i'm 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 not able to you would say like how your bowel system is how your yeah your gut uh, your gut your, your say, brain every, function yeah every part of our uh different systems in our body is affected as well mm-hmm. so it really affects the whole quality of sleep mm-hmm. and very important that uh, we uh, all remember that and for those that are joining us today uh, you may have some questions on that, and I know some of you are experiencing it already. Uh, there are a lot of things that we really have to think about. Mm-hmm. Now, there are uh, several stages of sleep, and uh, we have to understand that uh, there, technically, uh, from the medical side, mm-hmm. uh, we have what you call non-rapid eye movement or the non-REM. Mm-hmm. And we also have the REM. Mm-hmm. Uh, the yung REM, yan yung medyo, uh, as we age, yan yung compromise na. Okay, and that's the last stage. Mm-hmm. That's the last stage. So, uh, stage one, actually, uh, when uh, you go through the first few minutes mm-hmm. of your sleep, uh, is the change over from wakefulness to sleep. And you say, na antok na ako. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, if you enter that stage, uh, you're actually uh, entering the stage one of mm-hmm. your non-REM. And then, yung stage two, uh, that's when your non-REM sleep is a period of light sleep. Before you enter into, uh, parang nagaagaw yung antok, di ba? So, it's a very light sleep and you can easily be waken up by uh, several things. Mm-hmm. Like noises, yung lights, so you, you can become, uh, uh, co- or you can convert again to mm-hmm. a wakeful hour or minutes. And of course, in stage three, that's the non-REM sleep, is the period of deep sleep that you need to feel refreshed in the morning. Mm-hmm. This is actually what we are trying to aim for. Mm-hmm. The stage three, because if you get there, that's when uh, uh, the undisturbed quality sleep happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's our goal, and of course uh, we have the rapid eye movement. Sleep first occurs about ninety minutes after falling asleep. So, parang one and a half hour after falling asleep, we have the rapid eye movement okay. type of the stage of sleep, and of course we have to understand that we also have what you call. Uh, 
the anatomy of sleep. Okay. So, so yeah. Um, Would you mind explaining okay. that? How does the sleep occurs in our system? Mm -hmm. So if you think about your brain and all the systems in your body, remember that our sleep is uh, uh, not just a, uh, a physical activity. Mm -hmm. It's also a neurochemical activity. So in the background, we have a lot of um, uh, chemistry happening. And uh, uh, as you can see from this picture, we have the wake signals uh, branch two, we have the wake signals branch one, we have the, the limbic system, the pineal gland, and all of this, the brain stem working together in order for us to be able to sleep properly. Mm -hmm. And um, the brain is awake right there. So there's what you call the branch one, where the neurons in the upper ports produce uh, acetylcholine, which activates areas of the thalamus responsible for channeling signals uh, to the cerebral cortex, which is the site of consciousness. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. So uh, that's when the when we wake up in the morning. Okay. Right? So uh, again, yeah, that's where you um, you can uh, find uh, an increasing level of serotonin. Okay. Okay. And that's what we need mm -hmm. to so in trigger. the morning. Yep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, that's when uh, also happen. It also happens when we drink coffee in the morning. You suppress the production of adenosine, and of course, your melatonin goes down. Okay. So the waking cycle, and of course, um, uh, eventually after maybe what eight to ten hours of work, or maybe sixteen hours, uh, the brain gets tired. Well, so the body gets tired. <laughs> Everything in your system gets tired. <laughs> so. Um, that's when the homeostatic control sets in. Yeah. So whether you like it or mm -hmm. not, it's a reality. There's also a, sat a saturation point of mm -hmm. our brain that also signals us that, yes, definitely our body needs some rest. Mm -hmm. So that's where the homeostatic control sets in. And as the energy carrier adenosine triphosphate breaks down, uh, adenosine builds up and triggers neuron activity in the uh, ventrolateral pre-optic nucleus mm -hmm. or the VLPO. Okay. So it's a very technical thing that's happening in the background. Yeah. Uh, means and some, you know, some people um, do not understand this easily. And um oops. I'm sorry. Get back. Okay, so that's very important for all of us to understand that uh, if you are a person struggling with sleep, somewhere in the pathway mm -hmm. there is a uh, a problem. Okay. And of course, uh, circadian control as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have circadian rhythm, circadian uh, process. That's why it's very important that uh, we understand how our circadian rhythm uh, really uh, influences our sleep. Okay. And like what time do you sleep, what do you do, and all the factors that are involved there. Later on, I will, I will try to itemize this one. So um, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, uh, or what you call the SEN is the brain's master clock. So in that in the in our brain anatomy, we have what you call the SCM. Uh, Mahira P described, so we have to just have to resort it's to It's like acronym. a clock. Yeah, it's like a body clock. Mm -hmm. It's like a body clock. Uh, it's the brain's master clock containing neurons that fire in a 24-hour cycle to influence the what you call the BLP. Or there's a balance, parang CISO. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a the balance there. Uh, it is controlled by signals from the retina during the day and by melatonin from the pineal gland at night. Mm -hmm. That's why exposure to light, uh, like say during the day, actually wakens us up. Wakens yes, us up. Right. Uh -huh. And then uh, if you are uh, uh, continually exposing yourself to light, including the blue lights, in an unregulated function, uh, yan yung mga computers and cell phone, mm -hmm. uh, all of those, even TV, uh, emits all these blue lights. It affects the wake sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. To a certain degree, what happens is if you continually expose yourself to blue lights or uh, the light is on uh, at your bedroom, uh, na affect on yung pagtulog. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then uh, if things are settled, in a cyclical way, like say for instance, uh, your your sleeping time is uh, like eight in the evening or night in the evening. You continually observe that every day of the week and every day of the year, 
then your body actually gets that signal in a proper way. Mm -hmm. So there's no distortion. Yeah. What you call um, impairment of uh, signaling mechanisms. Yeah. So that's why our you know, reality, all these things that the brain responds towards our sleep has a big uh, factor how we have our environment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yun nga, sing binanggit ni Mario. So, the way we have, you know, how our brains allows us to bring down our energy level, how we try to respond to environment natin, kung maluwana, kung madilim, kung tahimik. So, all these things are factors for the brain to signal or to be triggered now, yes, it's time to rest, time to sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we have the on and off. In our brains uh, and the way our brain operates, we have the on and off. Uh, if it's on, then we wake up. If it's off, then we sleep. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when, uh, when the brain sleeps, there's a shutting down mm -hmm. of all these mechanisms and the melatonin production goes high. Okay. So until about early morning, uh, when the me melatonin production goes down. So once it goes down, uh, and of course, um, you know, adenosine, uh, po uh, po adenosine also production uh, is also going down, then um, that's when you start waking up. Okay. So all of this uh, chemistry behind uh, is really very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now to sum it up uh, for, you know, the yung diniskaso kanina, in order for you guys to understand that. So we have the circadian process and then you have the homeostatic process. And these are uh, two very important mechanisms and um, that either as ushers us to sleep or makakatulog tayo. Or if you disturb this, then you will have difficulty of sleeping. Mm -hmm. So we have we all have our internal clock. Uh, there are people who can uh, who will uh, sleep or oh, inaantok na at 9 o'clock yung iba naman earlier or yung iba later. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, we have our internal clock. And of course, yung uh, production ng melatonin, kanya-kanyang ano yan eh. May mga pattern mm -hmm. individually. And these are uh, what you call uh, sleep-promoting mm -hmm. uh, substances. And of course, there's another word which is again very important. Yung tinatawag na zit... Uh, na, na, Sit-jabber. Sit-jabber or uh, time-givers. Mm -hmm. time givers. These are environmental time cues, such as sunlight, alarm clock, or social interaction that helps trigger an organism like human beings mm -hmm. to in um to entrainment to a 24 hour cycle. Mm -hmm. So um so that's very important. And of course, uh, you need for sleep, yung tinatawag nating homeostatic process. Uh, when was the last time that you were able to get an adequate sleep? And that's are critical okay there are factors uh that affect normal sleep wake cycle uh yeah misalignment of the circadian process uh delayed or advanced melatonin secretion so um and some people are you know sometimes delaying that uh there's a dysfunction and of course uh you can talk nothing uh reduce gabayergic activity or exogenic overactivity uh at yung mga ina address pagka mayroong mga insomnia mm -hmm. and uh, these are uh, chemical substances that are uh, that can be uh, determined by uh, appropriate blood exams okay uh, overactivity of the limbic system mm -hmm. dito naglalaro ngayon yung essential oils uh, which can actually influence that and of course yung mga may sakit comorbid uh, psychological or medical issues as well as well as genetic vulnerabilities there are uh, there is a gene already identified uh, that uh, can actually influence sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people uh, or some um, uh, natin, uh, families have really issues with that. Now, there's a human study that was done uh, with regards to the effects of aromatherapy on sleep uh, and uh, control of anxiety patients or anxious patients. Uh, in, in this study, uh, merong uh, 60 patients that were uh, in, ICU. in an ICU setting in uh, southeast of Turkey. And they compare uh, what, and they use the, what you call PSQI or Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. And you can also have the BAI scale scores 
uh, in the control and intervention groups. And uh, at the end of the study, uh, it was proven that uh, it was statistically significant, the intervention. So they added lavender oil. And uh, because of that, uh, there was an increased quality of sleep and reduced level of anxiety in patients with coronary artery disease. Mm -hmm. one, one significant question here is, do we really need to have a coronary artery disease? Well, no, it just so happened that the study group uh, was all having coronary artery disease. Mm -hmm. So another study okay. yeah. uh, that is also very important before we go uh, into the other aspects of intervention is uh, this was done also in Texas. Okay. Uh, so it's, this is local, so U.S. And in this study, there were 42 adult patients. Uh, that, again, another um, uh, set of patients that has problems uh, in cardiac rehab. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, this is a randomized double-blind crossover study. It's compared a treatment with placebo. So two groups, mm -hmm. right? And uh, at the end of the study... Uh, uh, sleep quality of participants receiving intervention oil was significantly better than the sleep quality of participants receiving the placebo oil. Dito ginamit naman yung, ano, yung uh, lavender, bergamot, and ilang-ilang. So those three oils. Maya -maya, I know, yun yung part mo eh. Uh, you will be talking about those oils. Now, and uh, these are, for me, it's very significant. And it's very important for us to really understand uh, why um, essential oil is a significant intervention in our integrative approach towards managing sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, the next slide will show us a video, which I hope uh, you will uh, really learn from. This is, a, this is a personal experience. I will show it to you. really do normalize not getting enough sleep. When I very first got pregnant, one of the first things to go was my sleep. So my sleep got really disrupted. I kind of thought, well, this will resolve itself when I have my baby. I'm going to be up all night anyways. It'll be, you know, about six months on where I'm still awake for hours and hours in the middle of the night. I just kind of normalized it, like so many people do with sleep. Oh well, I guess I just, I'm a, I'm a bad sleeper. I'd had my oils for about six months at this point. I kept reading again and again, you know, serenity is so beautiful for supporting healthy sleep. I thought, well, at this point, I mean, I got my diffuser. I turned the diffuser on and I set my alarm and I fell asleep. I mean, at the time, I didn't notice it because it happened so quickly. And I woke up when my alarm went off. And it had been almost three years since I had slept that long and that well. Always the skeptic. I'm like, it's probably just a coincidence. Just the one night in three years that I actually slept through the night also was the night I had serenity. I'm sure it's not related. I'm sure tomorrow night will be back to my old pattern. Except then tomorrow night, then I put the oils in the diffuser again and I turned on the diffuser and then I slept. And then the next night I slept and then the next night I slept and I managed to get myself back. Um, and it was at that point that I kind of couldn't deny that. When you're in kind of a dark spiral of not sleeping, well, you don't really realize how much it impacts the rest of your life. And it really wasn't until I started sleeping every area of my life how much had disintegrated in my marriage. What a short tempered mom realized. <laughs> Once I started, you know, kind of sleeping again, you know, the biggest things were just feeling like I had the energy to really show up in my life. I had the energy um, 
We're going to the gym. <laughs> Sit down on the floor and play blocks with my little one. Go on a date with my husband. Serenity is a favorite of everybody in the family. We put Serenity in her diffuser every night. We have a Serenity roller. We sit on our feet before bed. It's a really um, beautiful part of our nighttime routine. So now, all my life is full. It's rich. And that feels really good. Okay, that's really something. Mm -hmm. uh, especially um, among women uh, who are pregnant. Uh, Isa yun sa mga pinakamahirap na part. Okay, falling asleep. Okay, so uh, what do you need to... Uh, or what do you uh, really need to do to help fall asleep? Help fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So definitely, it's always a choice of having uh, healthy choices. You know? uh, first, we have emphasized how our diet makes a big difference. You know? So choosing the kind of food, especially alam natin to, no? when at nighttime you still eat some uh, like sugar, high foods that still triggers like uh for you to be more active more likely if you have some high sugar uh diet, diet. so it's a choice really to make sure that we are eating healthy food uh definitely in you know, the natin having a, a sleeping environment that is conducive for sleep sabi natin mga lights off or even uh bringing down the noise lower would help us uh, I remember when we are trying to sleep and we use this like serene uh, music. Music, uh, like uh, relaxing yeah, uh, music. Relaxing music. Yeah, those are uh, uh, helpful and you know, uh, stimulants to sleep. That's why you avoid the possible stipul stimulants for you to wake up. But of course, having a nice bed. My husband would really like to have like a uh, an adequate bedding like it, she my husband loves like having fresh linens and saying that oh it helps me with a good sleep uh it matters for some people having some exercises removing distractions so if you're a person like me who is not able to sleep because the television is on so try to take it off or if you are still using your phone probably Keep it already off or uh, on silent mode when you are about to sleep. Uh, it's also good to relax your body. That at the time of, if you're thinking of doing certain activities, uh, maybe do it like an hour before or two hours before you start really doing some uh, relaxation to help your body to respond to sleep. Definitely having uh, to reset your internal clock, having a regular time of the day to sleep makes a big difference so mm -hmm. the if you try to sleep at different times of the day it's hard for your body to really have that uh reset uh for that internal clock to to trigger that oh it's time for you to lay down and definitely you can use essential oils to help you have a res restful sleeping environment now we have the science behind essential oils and sleep the first thing that I would like to share with you is the use of inhalation. Uh, this is with the inhalation of essential oils, this can induce an internal response within the body for relaxation. For some of you who are aware, uh, essential oils have different chemical makeup that the combination of uh, different uh, uh, chemical gives us uh, or helps us to have either the calming or to uh, effect or to give us the cooling effect that helps us to be more uh, other, more prone and you know, to relax just like uh, what was shared with the placebo uh, with the studies like lavender and how about the positive association what can you say about that one 
Okay, by uh, choosing essential oils with chemicals that hold relaxing, calming, and soothing benefits, it is easy to use oils to promote a peaceful environment for sleep. Uh, when you inhale the aroma of an essential oil with calming properties, it can induce response in the body of brain for relaxation. Typically, this uh, type of reaction helps to relax the body and promote a restful night of sleep. Once you've had a good night of sleep after using a specific oil, the brain makes a connection uh -huh. between the smell of the oil and the quality sleep. Remember, our brain has the uh, ability to memorize experiences and store it there. This is called a positive association. Okay. Established positive association promotes further use of the oil in your regular bedtime routine to help you repeat the practice of a good night's sleep. And that's very important for us to, if you practice it uh, regularly on a daily basis or every time you go to bed, mm -hmm. uh, that's what you call uh, positive association. Yeah, that's what we have been doing for the past mm -hmm. four years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, sleep, uh, in, this is a uh, an internal response and can encourage a restful night. And of course, your positive association actually uh, requires you to repeat it all over again the uh -huh. next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are essential oils that can help with sleep. And um, it's a long list of oils. Uh -huh. uh, when using essential oils to promote a good night of sleep, it is best to choose oils with calming, soothing, or relaxing properties. The beauty of using essential oils to help you with sleep is that uh, there are a lot of oils with calming properties to choose from. So two people can have a different reaction. So, uh, ako, uh, okay sa akin ang bergamot or okay sa akin ang lavender. But for you, uh, you may want to prefer uh, maybe Roman chamomile or vetiver or a combination. Yeah. Uh, as for my experience, uh, essential oils uh, uh, have uh, can promote the quality of sleep, and in this way, uh, I try to experiment with the oils which one will help me, because there would be times somehow there would be some saturation that oh you have been using lavender for quite some time already, so and uh, somehow you would say that oh. Uh, probably I have not been like uh, reaching the kind of sleep that you want, then it's time for you to try other oils. Change other oils. Change other oils. Mm -hmm. Just like cedar wood. This is one and one oil that I have been using recently. This has a warm woody scent that promotes a peaceful feeling that can help the mind and body unwind before bed. So I've been using, recently I've been using cedar wood, I've been using pettigrain, as well as frankincense to help me sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So I tried ilang ilang too. Uh, ilang ilang has a rich uh, floral aroma uh -huh. uh, that can also help reduce the effects of daily stress while promoting a calming environment. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of like a very important uh, technique mm -hmm. or skills or I would say practice that we need to do in order for us to be able to really uh, uh, get to the goal of sleeping or getting quality sleep. Yeah, so that's why for the wellness advocates who are joining us for this soon. So always uh, try to be sensitive, uh, just like what you said. If if lavender works for you, maybe for some it might not work for them. Mm -hmm. So there are other options of essential oils that you can suggest to them. Mm -hmm. You can go from the very common to the more uncommon and also very expensive oils. And of course, um, uh, there are um, different, ways. different ways to use it. Um, maybe you want to share on that. So, uh, in addition to a wide variety of oils to choose from, there are many effective ways to use essential oils to promote a good night of sleep. As we discussed, you might need to experiment with a few different oils to find the best essential oil or combination to help you fall asleep. So, you might also need to experiment with different application methods until you find a routine that works the best for you. So in here, it discusses like the utilization of a diffusion, like diffusion to help us with sleep, warm bath or shower, pillows and beddings, heating pads or neck wrap, topical application and massage, as well as sleep. So let's see it one at a time. So there's a relaxing diffuser blend that I can recommend to you that you can try. Like use three drops of sandalwood, three drops of vetiver, three drops of lavender, and two drops of Roman chamomile. 
that you can add up together uh, in your diffuser and this can help the aroma that can provide you to have a relaxing environment throughout the night. Uh, with most diffusers, you can choose a time setting that will keep the diffuser running, which will help you remain relaxed. And together, when you create a unique diffuser blend for bedtime, uh, the calming effect of essential oil that are mixed together will create a tranquil environment that is conducive to sleep. And the few uh, and another diffuser blend that I have here, we have four drops of lavender, three drops of bergamot, two drops of patchouli, and two drops of ilang ila. With these ones, you can also experiment of using this one to try for uh, for uh, a means, yeah, sleep. for a restful sleep. Mm -hmm. How about the warm bath? How would you uh, recommend that one? Uh, this one is very uh, unusual for me. I haven't tried this yet. I haven't tried this before. Uh, pero pinatry mo sa akin and it's so relaxing. Uh, taking a relaxing bath or warm shower might be part of your regular bedtime routine, just like before going to bed. That's my and routine now. I know. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to be faithful doing that. Uh, however, throwing essential oils into the mix might help calm the body and mind, promoting a better night of sleep. Consider adding uh, a few drops of your favorite lavender, uh, calming oil like, you know, uh, lavender or uh, cedarwood or even frankincense uh, or with Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. I've tried that. Remember uh, my first uh, bathtub soaking experience? <laughs> <laughs> he really wanted to sleep afterwards. <laughs> uh, I felt so relaxed. And by placing a few drops of an oil on the floor of the shower, the oil will mix with the steam and allow you to breathe in the calming, comforting scents. Uh -huh. Especially uh, if you have a warm bath or hot shower. Uh -huh. uh, pero sa Philippines, um, baka hindi ito applicable sa lahat ng mga bahay-bahay. Because they want more of the cool, cool mm -hmm. thing. So if you want to have that cooling effect, then that's mm. fine to use other oils. Yeah, so just be sure to place the oil away from the water path to make sure it doesn't get washed down and drain. Yeah. Usually it is recommended to drop it in the corner of the of the shower area. Or maybe on a higher, a little bit higher. Yeah, so... Yeah, so mm. but you no, know, because when you drop it, yeah, it will, it will, you can smell it while you're doing the shower that is so calming. Mm -hmm. So you can also keep the relaxing sense of essential oils with you throughout the night by placing a few drops of oil into your conditioner mm -hmm. uh, and applying to your hair in your nightly shower. Calming oils like clary seeds, ilang ilang, and lavender not only have relaxing properties, but can also uh, beautify your hair. I haven't Imagine. tried this. I only have a few hair. Uh, <laughs> if you have tried uh, the terrace, like uh, a shampoo, it has oils on it, it has lime, it has wild orange, it is very good as well for your hair. But of course, you can add up some oils with it. Okay. And of course, uh, the more practical uh, is our pillows and bedding. Yeah. So it is good to add a few drops of common essential oil to a spray bottle and mix with a few ounces of water. So, and then use this spray bottle to spritz the mixture over your pillow and bedding before going to sleep to create a restful environment. So one thing that you can add up to, uh, you can add lavender and cedar wood to that. It's like, a, it's a DIY of mm -hmm. spray that you can, you can drop in your, in your, that you can spray in your beddings or in your pillows to help you get the good night's rest. So bergamot or vetiver, so it's up to you how to mix the oils together. And somehow I know there was a time last December here in the U.S. There was even a, a what do you call this, a, a spray, a serenity spray that they have uh, brought out last Christmas. Mm, yeah. for, again. Serenity mist, is that serenity yes. mist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, another one that we can actually uh, do some, some mga bahay bahay, uh, is yung heating pad or neck wrap. Uh, we yeah. haven't tried this yet, but yes. I think uh, this is one thing that we can We are do. working on that one. So I tried it one. So if you are a person who, ha uh, who have a material like a kitchen towel like this, okay? And of course, either sewing machine or kamay lang, tahiin natin. So what you can do is fold the towel into half like this, okay? 
and then sew it on the edges just like what i did <clears throat> i sew it in the edges and then inside we'll put the rice inside okay so probably about six cups of rice that's the most common for us and then once you closed it you know that you can use this one as a heating pad so you can put so how do you heat up the rice put it in the microwave oh okay so and for put one acid in the microwave so uh, put it like in the stove top oh, okay mm -hmm. so you have it in the stove top uh with uh what do you call this in the stove di ba yung pot na meron siyang uh, nilalay yung parang griller tapos lang po siya ibinababaw okay. so you can uh, uh, steam it okay, or so it. It. or oh, yun, ma mali, malinis na kawali yeah but you have to make sure that it's not baka maburn siya so make sure okay. that it's on top of it and then have it for about a few minutes until the rice is warm inside then you can use it, use it as a heating pad but make sure it's not so hot that you're gonna burn yourself Oh, that's a good technique. Okay. okay. Then once it's hot, afterwards you can put the essential oil, about two to three drops of essential oil that you would that you would drop on this heating pad. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me try that tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one way to do that in mm -hmm. order for your uh, neck muscles and your shoulder muscle to relax. Mm -hmm. And that's one way. Uh, when when things are calmed down, uh, that's one way of um, uh, putting this melatonin uh, production um you know in place uh -huh. okay that's, true. Yeah, that's a good thing and um the last one and of course the last slide oh no two two more slides we have the topical application and massage it's very important for us to apply essential oils topically because it, it is one of very effective way to prepare the body for a good night of sleep by creating a calm environment as you apply oils to the skin, the aroma will linger for an extended period of time, allowing you to remain calm and relaxed. The bottom of the feet is one of the best places to apply essential oils before going to bed. The skin is very thick on the bottom of the feet, so it is less likely to cause irritation. But you will still be able to enjoy the aroma. The neck, shoulders, temples, and wrists are also good places to apply calming oils topically before going to bed. Also, topical application using calming or relaxing oils for massage before bed is a wonderful way to relax the body and mind. And this is the favorite of Mario when I do massage him. Because when, <clears throat> because of the stress of too much work with the computer, massaging his shoulders, his back, or even the legs and feet with essential oils will not only put the body at ease, but will also allow you to inhale the comforting aroma of essential oils at the same time. Remember, it is a good idea to dilute essential oils with a carrier oil like fractionated coconut oil before applying it topically to help avoid any irritation. So using a carrier oil, Carrier oil will help the essential oils absorb into the skin, which helps the benefit and the scent of the oil to last a little longer. So it is important to always use a carrier oil when applying oils to even young or sensitive skin. So be sure to have a carrier oil at hand when applying oils to your children. Yeah, it's very important for us to really be careful about um, mm -hmm. applying the oils directly to skin. Uh, or even to younger age, mm -hmm. age groups uh, because it might burn your skin as well. That's true. Mm -hmm. And of course, the last that we can do in order for us to uh, to enjoy quality sleep is uh, my favorite, our favorite, mm -hmm. warm tea. Okay. So definitely, when we want to uh, drink tea at nighttime, I recommend that we use non-caffeinated teas or these are non-stimulatory teas uh, when we add up essential oils to your bedtime tea it can provide a unique relaxing relaxing experience so you will want to make sure that uh, this kind of teas will not wake you up because if you use caffeinated definitely you will not be able to sleep mm -hmm. i tried that <laughs> like mga ulong tea oh no not not for night time Okay. Yeah, because uh, tea or caffeine actually suppresses the production of adenosine. Mm -hmm. And just like melatonin, adenosine and uh, melatonin are actually the 
the chemical substance that promotes sleep. Uh -huh. So if you suppress the production of that, then eventually you don't get uh, a good sleep. Yeah. So there are essential oils that you can add up to your herbal teas, like the lavender, the chamomile, the honey lemon. And I know there are already uh, some uh, teas that have that kind of uh, uh, chamomile flavored uh, uh -huh. teas already that you can use. But at times, I still prefer to add up the essential oil with my tea. Um, also, before adding any essential oil to your tea, you will want to make sure the oil has been approved for internal consumption. And you may label the supplement. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for those essential oils that we have, doTERRA has a certain um, uh, designation okay that you would see from the labels that uh, a is for aromatic t is for topical and i is for internal use and in that regard you can use the oil for internal like adding up to your tea uh if it is used for uh it it has a label of internal use okay okay yep so very important mm -hmm. uh to understand that okay so uh, i don't know uh, if you have questions, uh, let me check on uh, the chat. Uh, I think there are... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Betsy, as I've been Betsy, I set my phone, my iPhone held up to sleep from 9.30 in the evening to 5 a.m. at my bedside. It's a diffuser and an essential oil box. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Betsy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't I, know if there are other tips from others who. What did they do uh, to help them with their sleep as well? Okay. So let me uh, go to uh, the uh, stop sharing mode. Uh, I don't know if you have questions. Uh, do you? Uh, meron ba kayong mga katanungan? Uh, that you want us to uh, address, Arnel, si Agnes, si Lucy, wala oh, mga taga Department of Health lahat ito. Ah. Feel free to share your, your or chat it in or type it in kung uh, meron kayong question. Wala naman. Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sige. Uh, then, if you don't have any question, then thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can always message me anytime. Uh, and if you're watching this uh, from YouTube or, um, or dito sa ating virtual classroom, uh, feel free to comment or uh, send us a message if you want to, uh, to uh, answer a specific question. Yeah. And uh, these are natural solutions before we close. These are natural solutions. And when we talk about natural solutions, you're talking about uh, non-drugs. Uh -huh. Okay, and there are situations in, in our sleeping uh, uh, problem that really requires, um, you know, medications like pharmaceuticals. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a different issue. And that should be a different issue. Uh -huh. So I hope uh, we're able to help you on that. So thank you so much for joining and uh, good night. Bye-bye. Okay, good night to everyone.